not going to be any slides, any handouts, any, uh, like any glass windows. Some people are too, still coming, so I'll give it a few minutes. We'll kind of just go slow and give me um, Let me turn off my phone just in case. <laughs> gets up and leaves, they, there was, no, 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 that wasn't it. So everybody's here for trauma. Um, if you could, um, someone say out loud, no, uh, there's going to be no note taking, no slides, um, really low tap, eat, eat, drink, yeah. don't feel so <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first, and then I'd like you to go around and if, don't, just say like a brief, why did you choose this workshop to come to over the 20 others that you could have gone to? And I know it's difficult choosing. And my name is Joanne Sagona, and my uh, bachelor's and master's are in psychology. And I've worked in counseling and disabilities for more than 40 years, so I'm dating myself. <laughs> More than 40 years. I have three children. It's okay, no age discrimination. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Really do. And um, I have three children. My that's child number two and child number three are over there. Child number one is of course you went to hear a different workshop. She doesn't have to hear me. <laughs> And um, <clears throat> all my three children have disabilities. And when I went to school, choose what you want, go to college, choose a major. I chose a major psychology. Um, when you have children, you don't go, ah, I knew where we're coming. Hi, come on in, come up all the way up, all the way up, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bring some chairs, that's it. Perfect. And what's your name? Kim. Kim? Holly. Holly. Hi, Kim. I'm Hi. Joanne. Hi. We just started. So let me say this. Are you in the trauma? Did you choose the trauma yes. workshop? All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just telling everybody a little bit about me. Can you just be? There you go. <laughs> Let's go down. So I, thank you. Good. Yes. Okay. See your face. Um, <coughs> my master's and bachelor's are in psychology. I've worked in the field of um, counseling and disabilities and substance abuse. Um, come on in. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to wait. We got. Come on. It's okay. <laughs> come on in. Aww. It's okay. Come on, Littles, you can sit in the front. I just didn't know what it was about, so maybe we just... You want to sit in the back? Just to make sure you yeah. have trauma. Okay, well, I've already done some trauma with her. Okay, so you, you're in the right place, okay. huh? That's fine. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. come on up. Absolutely, wherever you want, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you can sit down. That's okay. Um, where was I? Okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> No, 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 that's, that's, 
it's just, it's good. Um, it takes a long time to find your way in the maze of where do you want to go and then how do I get there? It's a lot of choosing. Um, this, this subject is important to me, uh, why I chose to present about trauma is uh, because I found that the prevalence of trauma in society is a lot higher, a lot higher than we think it is. We have a vision of soldiers coming back from war and they have PTSD and they're having flashbacks and breaking things and committing suicide, or we have a vision of there's an earthquake or a tsunami and the people, you know, are running through the streets for war and that is what trauma is. And that really isn't, I mean, yes, that's part of it, but that's not the whole picture. And I find that many people with disabilities have experienced trauma in their lives and people don't realize it. They don't even realize it or nobody's listening or they don't know what to call it. So that's why the trauma workshop. Um, if you would please tell me why you chose, or tell us why you chose this workshop out of all the others. Who wants to start? I know you chose it because I'm doing it. Thank you very much. I can tell you why I did it. Good. My granddaughter just actually <coughs> coded twice in October on me. She came, she went from uh, riding a bicycle to um, nothing. Um, she was actually born with a chromosome disorder, chromosome deletion of uh, 13 duplication of one, or vice versa, whatever that is. But uh, that was my trauma number one, and right after she did that, a tree fell through my room. So it's double trauma. So I just don't know how, I mean, I, you cope with it. I know how people do all that. You know, medicine's not the answer. I know that either. So um, that's what happened. That's my that's, granddaughter. That's your granddaughter. Had her for seven years. We've been through, I can say hell and back. We've been through a lot. But um, yeah, that was the last before the trauma, so. Thank you for coming. It's just the coaching with it, that's what I asked. I, mean, you know, I, I guess I just maybe need to see other people that have been through it. I mean, you know, you think you're like the only one that's sure. all through all that stuff. And I know there's a lot more out there. I just haven't ran into them all, so. And you, even if you have, no one would tell you that you have. Right, right. So you would, that's why the group type of atmosphere, that's why let's turn the music down, and that's why I'm sitting and I'm not standing, and give, because it's, uh, thank you for coming and sharing, number one, number two, and number three, trauma is very personal. Yeah, but you just gotta learn how to deal with it or how other people actually cope with it. Exactly. I mean, I do, I've got, you know, I just go every day, you know, it's, you know, and I care, you know, this, it's not about me, it's about, it's about her. You know, and, and I, you know, I'm a CNA myself anyway, but in the healthcare field, you know, you see so many different things that, you know, a lot of these, you know, most, some kids are like a paycheck to some parents, and it's not for me, you know, and I see it. I, I, I see it every day. You know, she goes to school, she goes to a daycare, I see it every day. They don't care, you know, and unfortunately I do. So, you know, it's the little things that, that people do that it's just common sense and they don't do it. You know, so it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, does everybody else see all that? Then you have to deal with that anger and frustration yeah. and the incred you know, incredulous yeah. thing, like, how is that possible? It and I've had nurses in my house that have really, I don't know, they got them off the street. It's <laughs> terrible. I mean, people know that, right? Yeah. I mean, they need a session with all that. I mean, all these nurses that, I mean, can't even change your diaper for real. I don't get it. You know, and I do 90% of the work anyway. <laughs> yeah, I go six nights a week without a nurse. You know, because the one I had smoked around her, and that's not okay with me. You know, she's on oxygen. I don't understand. That's what I don't understand. Thanks for 
Oh my gosh, yeah. that's right. That's right. It's, it's terrible. And please forgive my neck for doing yeah. this, but and but if you, I know you want to stay in the I'm back, to you're welcome to stay in the like back, that. but you're welcome to come up. Oh no, that's please. not me. I just, I just no, please. I just want to get some answers for stuff like that. Absolutely. I mean, I want to switch agencies. You don't even dare because you're afraid because you're going to get nobody in either. <laughs> you know, or one wasn't, one wouldn't share with the other agency. So why did it all Medicaid? I don't understand all that. You know, it should. Just oh, just a single grandma raising two children. We just no, no, no. no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have my sister that helps me, and you know, for now, and that's that. That's just me. And did you know, just yeah, just one foot in front of the other every day. So. It's no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. She mm -hmm. has, she she's got all the questions, but she doesn't get the answers. Right. I mean, there has to be somebody out here that is able to give her the answers to the stuff that she needs. You think? But well, I'm everybody's like, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Things, I'll take so. a check on that. Yeah, you know, I'm on the back and, burner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's just not right because. Well, I speak up because, because I'm Because she suffers. Yeah. It's, yes. I mean, one lady I, I called and that lady, I filled out the paper for, you know, for some Medicaid waiver thing, you know, to get paid to watch her. Oh, well, that lady retired. You're kidding. I spent thirty dollars in faction papers, and now I'm sitting on the back burner. That's fair. So yeah, no, and it's not right. I mean, I'm not out there looking for winning lottery numbers. I just want, you know, care for her. I mean, you know, just a little bit. You're right, a little bit of something. I mean, is that that's wrong? And a little bit of help for you to Just get like, through this. I don't even get respite. I can't even get respite because I get 24 hours of care for her, which I don't get. Does that make it fair? See? So this is my vacation anyway. This is Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's Lego there, but we're in Orlando. It's <laughs> <laughs> all good. But it's a little thing, you know. But I can say, Grandma, she's beautiful. Yeah, and look yeah. And she's she doing well. She's so doing... Because I care. She's not a patient for me. The money is nothing for me. I don't need the money. I have a I have work a full-time job. Take care of a 90-year-old uh, Alzheimer's patient and a 90-year-old. So yeah, it's, both so. Mm -hmm. I have to work. I'm a single grandma that has to pay, you know, I, I have to pay bills, you know. Well, I bet you everyone when in here has their own story, but will understand. Yeah, well, well, thank you that, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm learning as I Keep munching, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Who else wants to introduce themselves? My name is Holly. Um, I have a sister who was hit by a car when she was 14, walking over to school, and she had a traumatic brain injury. So it's pretty much just like all of these just show like how to help her, I guess. <laughs> And and I'm, as we do this, I'm going to be <coughs> popping in some things because they're talking. You're talking about it right now, and we often think that trauma is just that which occurs to the person who experiences it. Oh no, it affects the whole but, everybody. But just observing it, just being—you weren't hit by the car. But you have experienced trauma as well. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, we know this now. We know this because of research. And yet we talked about how come the information isn't getting out earlier we were talking. And that's, it's not just just about your sister. It's about you as well. And that's, you'll hear that. You'll hear that, yes, you are being affected by trauma. And yes, Grandma, you are, and, and how we can cope with that, how it affects us. Who's going next? You're next to her, so you're going to have to. Oh, I am. I have to go the same as in my It's your sister as well? <laughs> or, I, I don't know. What's yeah. your name? Sorry. Um, I'm Kim. Kim. And um, my sister is a father. That's so. Uh, 
easier to share with each other. And that's, that's a big part of trauma is, some, is feeling alone, quite isolated, out of control. And so this is a good thing to do, to help get other people to help you. I'm not going to volunteer for somebody, so you have to decide who wants. Okay, great. I'm Rachel, and because of my Asperger's syndrome, I'm obviously misunderstood from a lot of society, especially if you're high-functioning like me and want to go into more mainstream settings as opposed to disability-designated settings. And I think that's my biggest trauma, being drummed out of things like jobs or churches even or housing suddenly because my because of some symptom of mine, you know, and then people just misunderstood my behavior. And I think. A lot of times dealing with sudden change, realizing that sometimes you lose things important to you when you have to make a change. Like I can move twice in my junior high years because of my father's job loss, and I think that's also something that might qualify as trauma. But it's a, but going to DSM, unfortunately, if it's not something like a car crash or a hurricane, you're not going to diagnose it with something like post-traumatic stress. But I do think I'm having a lot of the flashbacks of a lot of the bad traumatic things that have happened to me. It's gotten to the point where I almost can't cope. Thank you for sharing, and you're, you're right, you're right. So look how much information you have told all us that are already going to be in the presentation. So you're Might right. Might as well go on to the other ones. You're right, you're right, you're right. You, and so you're going to hear me repeating what you say. Yes? Oh, I know. Mom, 26-year-old, who was born with a genetic problem that causes constant pain and deterioration. And so it's repetitive trauma that he experiences and how to be supportive and yet let him grow and be a man, because he is, um, but he needs assistance. And then my professional life, I'm a nurse case manager for chronically ill children who need private nursing at home. And I'm frustrated because I can't get the services my kids need. And I need to be able to support the families as well as make the system work and the traumas are multiple different kinds that they go through and I don't really understand. You help me a lot just by sharing what did my mom's feel, what did my grandma's feel and then how do I help the feelings and the problems. So we got, we're coming at it from a lot of different angles. People who experienced it, themselves, who experience it with others, secondary, working with people who are going through it? I think a lot of it's a lot of a learning experience. I mean, what we go through is all a learning experience. <coughs> if it doesn't help you with the situation, it will actually help you somewhere. Like you'll run into somebody else and say, hey, wow, this is something happened, the same thing. You know, it's all, it's all a learning and you can, it just goes to help everybody else too. You know, it's sometimes a big circle. You know, so it's a learning, it's a shocker. Um, so my name is Evelyn, and I was born with pulmonary atresia of the right ventricle and had three open heart surgeries as a baby. Um, so that was like a physical aspect of that. Um, but then also when I was 20, I remember being sexually abused as a kid. And so that led to post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> so I live with that on a day-to-day -day basis. But like you were sharing, like when I tell people like I have anxiety attacks or panic attacks or PTSD symptoms like um, from like that and other situations. Um, the last partner I was with, I didn't realize it because he was my first boyfriend, but he was actually an abusive person. Um, luckily I'm not in that relationship anymore or anything. But like that added a lot more trauma to that. And so a lot of, I don't know, like people just like think of it like in like a military sense or like as a physical symptoms. Like I live with an invisible disability. People don't see my disability. So I get treated like there's nothing wrong. So when I have a post-traumatic stress attack or an anxiety attack in a different way, like. People are like, why are you acting crazy? It's like, I don't know. Like, this is just me reacting to stuff. So, I guess. Yes. <clears throat> One of 
one thing that we do know, you know, you, you know it, even though you didn't study it, you know it, that we know that trauma doesn't just have to be one incident, a war, an earthquake, a tornado. Trauma can be a layered part, and it can come build slowly over time. And major things like surgeries, um, certain you know, rapes, uh, car accident, major things, in addition to things like being constantly harassed and bullied and demeaned, that can start when you are a little child, if your parents don't, you stupid, you, you know, okay. You, you've heard the saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never harm me. We, we, now we all, uh, it's been hundreds of years, people saying that. We now know through actual MRI studies, we've all done scientifically proven that, you know, broken bones can heal but constant uh, harassment, uh, abuse, humiliation will shake us to our core, will, can shake our sense of um, security in the world, our sense of control with the world. We know we're sitting here and this chair is gonna stay and I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna walk. But when you, your world all of a sudden becomes unstable, then we no longer, you know when you're driving through a green light, you're going to go. You don't expect a, a car to go through a red light and slam you. When we live in that kind of a world where everything is unpredictable, we never know what's going to happen, it colors us. It's like we're putting on sunglasses. And we don't realize that, you've ever seen these kind of yellow sunglasses or blue or pink, and we don't realize that they're on. And yet the whole world is thinking to us normal, but it's not. And so when other things can happen, we can have an enormous different reaction than people would anticipate. And then they'll say, so what's wrong with you? And that, that uh, just gives more layers of trauma. In addition, no, in addition, I just wrote these down because it's so important. People who view people with disabilities or who have different reactions, or like panic attacks, or anxiety attacks, or continual depression. And they say, so what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? How come you can't cope with this? How come you can't, um, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Come on, suck it up. What's, what tra trauma-informed care is a, 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 a new way of viewing trauma. And instead of people coming at you saying, what's wrong with you? you the trauma-informed care comes to you and says, what happened to you? What happened? Let me understand your experience. What, ha what, what, what do you experience? That's what I said, why are you here? What happened to you? And then, okay, how can we move forward from here with a better understanding instead of blame? And that's what we're here for. Um, part of it to tell you about what we know now. Let's start talking of what is trauma. And we've covered it before. It's not just a, a, a war. That can be anything that can shake your control of life, your security. So imagine you are always, um, and this is why trauma can tend to affect people with dis disabilities more. Because if you are in a wheelchair, or if you need more help to do the normal things in life, you, are, have, you have less control. By definition, someone who needs the help of others more than the average 
is going to be at a more risk for feeling traumatized. In addition, people who have disabilities, hidden or otherwise, the world kind of sees, they don't know why, you know, well, they say, okay, you don't have Down syndromes. If you see a child with Down syndrome, they say, okay, I recognize that. You see a child in a wheelchair, I recognize that. But if you have hidden disabilities, people see you internally, they get a feeling that something's not right with you. They don't know why, but then people tend to be bullied more, harassed more, um, stared at. Yes, insulted. Keep, come on, you can throw some. Rejected, denied things. Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Put her in the hole. That's okay. Yep, mm -hmm. sure. And, you know, I'll share. I'm sharing for you, Andrew, okay? <laughs> uh, when he was in second grade, and I'll share it out, Andrew has Asperger's. And when he was in second grade, um, he, and he has dysgraphia, so it makes things bigger. It's easier than very small little models. He's supposed to build a model of the White House. So he did. He built this great big model of the White House. And the, it was bigger than the other children who were like, the, like a diorama size. So she stuck his under the tables where the kids kicked it and walked at it. And then, well, it was just too big. And then it was constantly, when he was in third or fourth grade, and he was a little different in the class. So the, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you didn't bother. So the assistant principal came up with a good plan. Each day, we're going to put him in a different teacher's class so he's not too annoying for any one teacher. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yep, that's the <laughs> Well, he's older, probably back then, they didn't have all that stuff like they do today. He's not that old. He's only 23. I mean, and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that's the thing. He's, and wow, these are educated people. They have degrees, yes. <laughs> um, and you, f you face this discrimination. You go to, uh, he goes to a, uh, like a Disney World with friends and uh, school, and then the friend ditches you and runs away um. and leaves you alone. And so there's constant. He also has that. I'm oh, sorry, it's your day today, so I'm not going to pick on Danielle. He also has that seizures, but seizures that are they're like um, absence, not so noticeable. So he was in class, and he asked a good question. Very smart. Asked a good question had a seizure, forgot um. that he asked it, asked the question again, the teacher is so mad, then there's a lack of understanding. There is, that, unless you um, don't understand why? it also. I mean, like, I've never dealt with that kind of thing, or just like, I mean, Down syndrome I know a little bit about, but if you don't know what that particular thing is, you have to get educated for that. I mean, autism, I've, that's another whole ball game. I don't even know anything about that. But in order to deal with that, you have to actually be taught and you educated on all that, right? Well, that's like, that's like with my sister, like, we had a teacher that was, like, really good with her, like, she, like, read along about it, like, tried to do it really good with her, and then we got a new teacher for her, and she, they just put on, she was in a coma for almost two years, she just watched the TV, like, she didn't do anything, it was, like, move her from the bed to the shower, and she watched the TV almost all the time, and she, so she hates TV, she doesn't like watching TVs. And all they do is play videos, and she's also, like, really OCD, and they don't understand, like, brain injuries, because she's, like, sensory, and it, she'll get mad, like, they'll get her to the point she's, like, kidding herself, and oh, she has a plate in her head, like, the whole right side of her skull was taken out for almost two years, and, like, she'll, like, she'll, when they go in the hallways, she'll, like, try to fix all the lockers, and the teacher will, like, pull her chair back, like, that's her body. And they just don't understand it. Like, with the, I mean, brain injuries are a little bit different, but they're just all like, no, that's just her having an attitude. Um, and they don't realize, like, how it actually is. It's like, no, like, that's what she does. And they'll, like, hold her wheelchair, and she'll get to the point she'll, like, backhand you 
it's like they don't understand it. They're just like, no, you need a teacher. You're doing it wrong. We've had nurses come in the house and would be like, oh, she doesn't have a brain injury. And we're like, she was hit out of a car by 45 miles per hour. She spent two years in a coal mine. You're going to say that she didn't have a brain injury. She just started talking not that long ago. Like, she ate through a tube for, like, forever, for, like, three years. And they're just like, no, nothing's wrong with her. You guys just don't know how to do it. And, like, we're like, what? No, like, brain injuries are different from, like, other things, but they just don't understand them. They're like, I don't know, it's irritating. It's terrible. And I'm in the same boat. I had a nurse yesterday. I mean, just because she doesn't do anything, she just laid in the bed all day. Yeah. No TV. And the nurse paced, paced, and paced, paced, paced back all day and forth, long. Back and forth. How do you do that? We, I, I can hire a babysitter and pay them. Mm-hmm. I mean, she likes to be held. I mean, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes, you can hold her. Do, do range of motion with her. Read her a book. She's still, she's in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, but I don't, you're right. I don't understand these people. I think you lay her in the bed just to sit there and not even talk to her. <laughs> One nurse actually just laid her on the couch. I caught her on camera, and I had to call the nurse and say, uh, you guys have some kind of schedule at school because you aren't doing anything with her at home. Oh, she just likes the lady on the side. <laughs> yeah. But you're all comfy That's walking a good back with a little neck thing around, and I said, she's laying here not even thinking that there's even a nurse there all day. <gasps> yeah. That's she probably what you had to do that. That's like when Heather Heather was in the coal mine. We had nurses that would fall asleep on the couch and walk us out of our own house for hours and would bang on the doors. We had her nurses were sleeping too. They were sleeping on the floor. Yeah, we video. Yeah, we had a nurse that she actually made her schedule when she could sleep. And I came home early one day from school because I'm still in school. I'm only 17, and she. I caught her. She was laying on the couch. Really? Her shirt was pulled up. Heather Heather could transfer herself when she first figured out she could transfer herself. She actually moved herself to the her, to her bed. Mm-hmm. And if she would have fell over or anything, she would have been done. She was dirty when I got there. No medicine. She didn't get fed. I took her almost a two-hour walk. The lady didn't even know I left. What agency was that? Uh, yeah, we had a van. I do too. She they does have, too. The same agency. I've had a homeless lady. Oh, they, they, and then you put her on a train. A homeless lady. Yeah, yeah, she she had, had a homeless her. lady. A nurse. They were out of her nails. van with dirty nails. Ate with her, ate with her fingers, and then she didn't even push her down the ramp to get on the bus because, oh my bad, no. And the then went to the beach. Yeah, we took but pictures of her and sent it to the agency, and the agency put her on a trach patient. Terrible. Nothing. Put her on a trach patient. I can't, I have nurses that can't even change a drink. I do 90% it. of the work. My sister doesn't. 90% of the work. That breaks my heart with that. That's wrong. Mm-hmm. You got all these nurses. I don't care if they're getting paid $15 an hour. It's because it's a paycheck. You that's why they can't yeah. go out in the real world and get a work. Get that's, a job. that's like, um, ever terrible. like ever yes. since her accident, I wanted to become a nurse. So I've worked with special needs oh. going on four years. It's a year. And, yeah. I know. I'm going to do doing. it when my older people something happens. And because, like, both, like, I've seen nurses, like, come in at our house, and it's just, like, a paycheck to them. It and I'm is. like, I don't understand how you can do that. Like, you're messing with somebody's life. You just don't care. It's sad. It is paycheck. Really I had this big man. I'm not even allowed to He couldn't even get out of my chair. You're sending me, that man, to take care of her the night that she coded and came home. He never changed her all night. Never gave her medicine all night. And she was full of crap from the back up. But that's okay, he still has a job because I reported this his man name. still he has a job. Barely walk. I mean, we're talking like this. Well, it's a good that. thing she's he not still like has a job blue, there. you know? It should yeah. be illegal. How was that right? It's yeah. not. Like well, we're going to move because this lady up front wants your turn. I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, because no, no, we could go yeah, we could go over. Yes, I'm going to keep you all moving. That's okay. I just wanted to say, like, I was actually kind of become a teacher because I wanted to like help people and stuff, um, especially because like um, my brother um, also has Asperger's and so we were friends like writing all about that and stuff and so he was always talking about how hard it is for him in school because he like is really like he understands everything but then they want him to like sit still even though he's already done like all of the packets that they've given him and so he just gets like frustrated so like and that was so that was going on. But when I was starting to study about being a teacher and everything, like in Florida, 
we're so focused on FCAT and we're so focused on like everything that like up and from I actually got to go and like sit in in a classroom for kindergartners and if the kin the kindergartners could only go outside on Fridays for 10 minutes and that was it and like and if they moved they had like the green yellow red thing like but like if they lost like they go down to yellow you only got five minutes of playtime if you go to red wow. you get zero minutes of playtime and you have to go sit wow. like on the sidewalk while all of your friends yes. go play so like other than the fact that like the school system in and of itself needs to be like revamped because we're focusing on a test and not a student the other thing too is that like the we're not letting kids be kids right. and so like because we're not allowing that like that's causing them to have their own issues and like have even more like anxiety towards test taking mm -hmm. so that's i don't know i personally for me like that's where i feel like there needs to like where i stand on that and i like try to like be an advocate for that because a lot of times teachers want to be able like all the kids who i was in the class with trying to learn they were all wanting it to be like let's help our kids but they're not allowed to like there's laws in place where they're not allowed to help the students they have to focus on the test so I just, that needs to just be changed i just want to chime in here real quickly because i'm from the dick hauser center in tallahassee florida mm -hmm. and we have we run a we're a nonprofit, but we yeah. run a preschool and we have um birth the six-year-olds and we also have a therapy team there on site as well and um you know, we, we focus on children with disabilities, all, all different kinds of disabilities, and we get, <clears throat> we get a lot of kids who have experienced trauma. Um, I think it's trauma because they get kicked out of their schools and their families are constantly being told that their child uh, needs an aid to be at that particular school or something like that. and. And we, we do make modifications, obviously, but they're so minor when you really look at what we do that I really wish more um, preschools, because that's where I am, but it goes up into elementary school, because what is happening in elementary school pushes down to us. There's actually schools that I know of that if they suspect during a tour or an interview that the child may have a special need, whether it's been diagnosed or whatever, that they will not take that child. And I know that's not legal, but it happens every day. And we get so many children, usually around the age of three, because that's when it becomes they're not a baby toddler anymore, but yet they're still biting, hitting, kicking, you know, or they're not talking, or these kinds of things. Um, for children that just come into our school and are just um, need assistance, but are just pretty typical kids um, when they just get a little bit of what they need. And um, and we get graded as a preschool by the state of Florida. So a lot of schools will not take the children because they feel like when those kids go on to kindergarten, take that kindergarten readiness exam that everybody has to take, that they won't have 100% or they won't have a 90% of those kinds of things. It's so sad that what you're saying is so true yeah. and that it's being pushed down yeah. into preschool. What we do now in preschool, I have parents that come to me of three-year-olds who are worried they are behind. <laughs> and I just, it just kills me. And we're doing so many um, developmentally inappropriate things now with two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds because we're being told that they have to be doing all of these things for kindergarten. And at some point, somebody really has to stand up and say, enough is enough. Children need to be outside and children need to be um, learning at a reasonable pace. There's no research that shows that if we graduate a child who's reading, that they're any smarter, going to be any more successful later on in life. There's there's no research that says any of that. It says the opposite. And I think that's causing a lot of families a lot of undue stress. It's like if you walk into it, I work, in a, like, I work with special needs. I volunteer them a lot. And um, if you walk into a special needs classroom, I mean, I work with kids that 
can't see to just sit in a wheelchair and they'll test them, like make them take the FCAT and like ask them how, like they'll read them um, um, like sentences and be like, what's the correct answer for this meeting? And they can't even talk. They can't move or anything. And they make them take the FCAT. You have to have a doctor's note saying that you cannot take it. And even then they refuse it sometimes and make them take it. Yes. Yeah. Not and the, they sit and they can't do anything. Well, they, tried to, they tried to have Heather yeah. take the um, assessment test, the alternate, while she was in a coma. Yeah. And they're like, well, can't you just give her a pencil? Really? In a coma? <laughs> and they literally came out to the house and was like, yeah. Well, that's, that's part of, there's three, actually three components to trauma. The one we've gone into a little bit is what happens, the event, that it can be explosive, it can build up over time, it can be neglect, it can be abuse, it can be bullying, um, surgeries, the, the event that happens. The second component clearly is the person, because one event can happen to two people, and one person is traumatized and the other is not. And that doesn't mean one person is weaker or stronger than the other. It's just everyone's different. We all have, um, in psychology, there are gradations on, on a scale of each kind of characteristic of a person. Everybody has some kind of sense of humor. Some are less, some are more. Everybody has some ability to cope with what happens changes in their lives. Some people, doesn't matter what changes, they're easy to cope. Some people, one little thing changes and they just can't handle it. Um, anger, frustration, um, different personality um, attributes, um, you throw some things that everyone's different on a different scale. That's why I said the second part of it is everybody there's no two people alike at all. You take the, to have studies with identical twins, born in the same house, raised with the same parents, and yet have completely different personalities. Um, so that's part of the components. So what happens is one, the person is the other, and going back to that chart, not what's wrong with you. That's, we can't look at what's wrong with you, why are you signed <coughs> up, what, you know, be a man, why can't you take it? But more like, what's, what's, that's fine, come on in, don't, don't, don't just, what, what constitutes your personal makeup? And then the third component that in, uh, impacts trauma is society's, or the community's reaction around you. Um, here's an example. Um, World War I soldiers came back, and um, you've heard the word uh, shell-shocked. They, they noticed there was something not right with some of them, and they called it shell-shocked. They didn't, at that time, they didn't know, turn of the century, what, what it was, but they knew something was up. Uh, World War II soldiers came back, and they went through also horrible experiences, and yet when they came back, the community was giving parades, they were happy, let's get jobs for you, uh, we honor you, we appreciate your service, and there were less incidents of post-traumatic stress disorder after those two, and those were two horrific, the world wars. When the Vietnam vets came back, we find there's a much higher incidence of post-traumatic stress disorder because they were shunned. It wasn't their fault they were sent to war, but people didn't, the society around them didn't appreciate the war. And so you see homeless Viet Vet, um, they kind of shunted it off to the side, more stress, more, tra more trauma. And we're finding, you notice, the incidents of post-traumatic stress disorder are out the roof right now with um, our military coming back. And the part of that problem is 
they survived. They were fine. They survived together. When they come home is when everything breaks down. That's when the incidents of suicide go uh, out the roof. And uh, we're, we're struggling with that as a society, as a country right now. And so those three components together affect trauma in any individual. And when you add people with disabilities, they have personalities or behaviors or situations in themselves that make more susceptible to trauma. When you add the fact that the events in their lives, things like being bullied or left alone on a chair and you feel helpless and the man sleeping and not taking care of you, and you feel like you're alone in the house, even though there's a person, what, people take advantage of you, great, you, you, many denied a job, denied a, a place to live because of who you are. When you add that with society, it keeps beating you down. Oh, perfect example. Please, this is not a political, it's just an example, okay? I'm not taking a political stand here. Uh, Donald Trump made fun of, on public TV, on the news, made fun of a reporter with disabilities. So Donald Trump was making fun of him like that. Uh, like, what's wrong with this, you know? Uh, when a, a, a major public figure will approve and, and publicly humiliate and demean people with disabilities, that's one man, that's all people with disabilities, it shows you that our society, we're trying to have things like accessible parking spaces, um, curb cuts, but society today still is completely ignorant about disabilities. So you've got the, tr the, the incidents of bullying, abuse, neglect, constant pain, being in pain all the time and not being able co to communicate with others. The lack of community, the lack of control, your survival instinct kicks in when you've got the person themselves, their personality, and then you've got the fact that society devalues you. You have a perfect cookstorm up for trauma. And unfortunately, those, and the word isn't weakness, those more vulnerable of us are the people with disabilities. And then the least attention, everybody will, again, I'm not, will rush to people who were, say, in a car accident or a tornado. You'll see everybody rushes and how can we help you? Not even so much car, not cars, or coming back from war. But there is no rush to help somebody who's been systematically abused and neglected for their entire life. No one's rushing. When they take them to the doctor's office, the doctor, oh, they don't need Novocaine. I'm just, we'll do it. Yes. It's sad that, like, we go to the doctor and they're like, if we ask, like, ever since her accident, she had some really bad, and she got really bad acne from the brain injury. And we asked the doctor to refill her medicine. She was like, why does she need that? Like, oh my God! What do you mean? Why did she, she need that? that? She's yeah. And like her face is breaking out bad. But you gotta speak up and don't stop. I mean, you gotta. And I'm still yelling. You gotta don't back off, man. I don't. You gotta stand up for what's and right for mm -hmm. for these people and these kids, or you know. Because otherwise, I can't even get a chair for her at home. Although she has to sit in a wheelchair, I had to go buy an IKEA chair just so she could sit in it because her therapist she only gets a half an hour of for a week. That's it, a week. A half an hour. I take her horse therapy on my own for an hour. But they only signed up to get her a wedge. She didn't want to get the other chair that's only maybe a hundred dollars more. A wedge. Really? A wedge. I work with a kid that um he's really smart. He's really smart but he can't talk. So he 
lets him know he says wow and yeah and no. That's the only thing he can send, but he's smart. And they can't, it won't even get him to communicate. <coughs> And he's so smart. Like, he just points at things and the teachers will like completely ignore him. And when I go in there, I'm like, what do you need? And I go in there every day and he already he has like his, um, his feeding um, bib on for like an hour after he eats. And he'll be like, he'll ask me to be like, take points to it, like take it off please. And then they just sit there and just look at him and go. No, it's not only like, it's constant heart rate with everybody. Yeah. It's, it is. It's constant. And I think, I'm going to take a guess here, um, like when Andrew was in school, high school, and they said, well, you know, we'll send him to a voc rehab. You know, we'll send him to like a, a vocational school. Vocational <laughs> school. And then when he was, when he was finished two years of college before he even finished high school, and the Vogue Rehab counselor said when he wanted to graduate with a, a degree in journalism, and maybe go to law school, the Vogue Rehab counselor said, scale it back. Come on, man. You're not going to be, yeah. you know, no. scale actually, it back. You, you understand? I know. Like, that actually, I was, I actually was working with a Vogue Rehab person in West Palm and everything. And um, I, right when all the folks, like, basically re-traumification happened when I remember what happened to me and everything. And so I was still, like, I was trying to, like, do my regular life stuff, but at the same time, I was also dealing with all these things. And they were like, well, you don't really want to help yourself, because if you did, you would just go see a counselor and talk about it. And I was like, are you kidding me? And then I told them, so then we were talking about, like, what I wanted to do. I'm like, so I was trying to explain and stuff, and then they got mad at me because I kept changing my mind. But the reason why I kept changing my mind was because they were like, you're not going to be able to do that in five years. And like, you've been in school, like, I've been in school and college for six years. They were like, you haven't even gotten your associates yet. There's no way you're going to be able to do this. Do you want to have healthy relationships? Like, I've had people who are supposed to be helping me tell me that I'm not going to get married or be a good mom. Like, That's what like, am I supposed yeah, to do with that? Like, you can't take that into consideration. Exactly. Yeah, That's like, like with Heather, they were like, she was supposed to be a vegetable the rest of her life. And she was, she had a 50% chance of living after the accident. They are like, she'll be a vegetable the rest of her life, like whatever. And for a year and a half, she was, almost two years, and then she actually started doing things. And God yeah. was like, you don't know how she was doing that. And they still like, don't even know that she's going to do it. You know, and you don't look that old to me. <laughs> I didn't, I, I, I don't think. I experienced normal trauma as just a regular person in this world. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't get my degree till I was 30. Screw them. Yeah, you get like, it I when you get like, it. I had to reject it, but they were getting mad at me because they were like, well, you're just saying to I was like, I'm not listening to you anymore. Okay. Whatever. I was like, well, I didn't Life is not away. a straight path. <laughs> yeah, I walked away. Well, it's a windy. Right, the boy that was going I, to be sent to a vocational school because he couldn't do anything was asking too many questions his class because this is his last year of law school. Wow. And it's just, so you know what? Lightning. <laughs> Sorry, exactly. excuse me, videotape. But, <laughs> um, don't. Part of yeah. this class is the end of. So, how, what do we do? Okay. Never give up. Never yeah. surrender. Never exactly. Give up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Galaxy Quest. Or so. Yes, please. I just came from. Uh, with one of my clients before I came here. And all these issues are going to impact this family and they're just flooded and overwhelmed. But there are those who do care and there are those with good skills mm -hmm. and you may have to go through a hundred of them to find the ones or you may be the one. But what I found in this meeting today was there were four of us together, two nurses, two social workers, and this family from three different agencies. And for one golden moment, we were all on the same page with the same energy. Now, I'm still going to have to go home and look for nurses. But it, it was like, can I just keep it's these people? <laughs> <laughs> there were 200 people. Yeah, hopefully the 101 one will be good. I had a great nurse. I'm not even going to lie to you. And she just fell right off the side of the you know, She got another job and never called, never came back. Nobody knows. Well, yeah. I got a hold of her and texted her. I said, you could have just told me that you were leaving. 
How do you just do that? It's so hard on families. Well, this is the problem. She's got a couple good nurses when she gets them. I mean, they are excellent. I mean, through advance. I mean, you can't ask for anybody better than that. But then you get the other ones that are the bottom of the barrel. But, but you can't go to another agency nope, because the agency does they, not play with share. another agency. Yeah. But Nobody you can, when, uh, like what we did, we had a really good nurse. And even if they try to take her off case, she can be like, I'm not leaving this case. And they can't switch her cases. And can. you can ask her just to stay on your case. Like our nurse, like we didn't really let anybody in there. She did full time and over because of her doing it. We had, yeah, we got her, our first nurse, we had really good, and we had her, and she went on cruises with us, like she was like wow. part of the Mine family. Mine aren't even allowed to leave county with me. I don't have any tonight, tomorrow night either. Yeah, um, you talk to the main, uh, if you talk to the main, um, if you talk to the main guy, he, uh, this guy's work. name is Dean, and yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Where is yeah, it? Whenever we can't get anything done, we tell the Dean, and Dean like gets right on it. We just keep. We'll call. We'll call. Because I have already had it out. We've had it out.